source social networking platform moving towards decentralization. Um, very focused on privacy, transparency, uh, reward. So we have a whole crypto token reward system where for all the engagement you receive every day, referrals, number of different actions you earn, Minds tokens, which are ERC-20s, and you can then use them to boost your posts. One token will give you a thousand extra impressions on whatever content you want to post. You can wire it to other users as a tip or as a recurring monthly subscription in exchange for different rewards that they set. You can get premium features. You can actually launch a node, so you can launch your own social network with our stack and do whatever you want with it too. Great. Yeah. So how does it compare to other social networks that we, that we know? Well, uh, so it's fully free and open source, so obviously all the mainstream social networks, none of them are. Mm -hmm. um, but then we do have some really cool projects in the crypto world that are open source and they have token systems and you know, I'm down with them too. Mm -hmm. I think that there can be interoperability at some point. It would be cool mm -hmm. if we started federating together so you could cross post between the open source networks. Um, and we're also working on a fully decentralized prototype actually this weekend called Nomad. If you go to gitlab.com slash mine slash Nomad, you can see the initial code. But it uses the Ethereum address, your mine's wallet address as your username mm -hmm. in that ecosystem. And then you can, it uses DAT protocol, which is a sort of torrent style, mm -hmm. DAT colon slash slash. Mm -hmm. Got it. And that's amazing because it's fully peer-to-peer. -peer. Mm -hmm. It's not you know, it's not federated, which is sort of smaller, decentralized nodes. It's, you know, everyone is, is fully mm -hmm. on their own. That's great. Yeah. So, so the user data um, within the social network uh, doesn't get collected in a centralized server at all, or? Correct, but it is, you know, with blockchains and with DAT and other decentralized protocols, you know, it's hard to delete things. Uh -huh. So, you know, you do have a lot more control in one sense, but in another sense, you're sort of unleashing your content into mm -hmm. sort of the ether. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, depending on what you want to do, that may or may not be the best solution. So I think that there's, you know, I would see that in the future we're going to have a hybrid type model where, you know, central servers are not evil. Mm -hmm. They can be, mm -hmm. but you sort of want to be able to make the decision how you're treating your content. Like maybe you do want to upload it to a server so that you could delete it at some point. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you just want to unleash it. Mm -hmm. It depends. So um, aren't you faced with challenges like uh, what about the ability to provide analytics and, and sort of artificial intelligence the way other social networks uh, sort of predict uh, who you might uh, like to associate with? Or yeah, I mean, well, in, in a decentralized environment, that's harder. Mm -hmm. But on minds.com, we, you know, we do use servers. Mm -hmm. We use Elasticsearch, we use Cassandra. So, you know, there are open data that we can provide to people sort of on a consensual basis, you know, have users opt in to, you know, provide anonymized data to the community so people can see what's happening. Mm -hmm. I think that it's all about consent. Mm -hmm. People just want to be asked. Uh-huh, yeah, 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 yeah. So in, in order to leverage that kind of analytics, um, the users would have to consent to, to share some of their data, or at least anonymized uh, data that, that can be uh, used, um, right? right. And, and so um, do you have an opt-in mechanism or? or um well, a lot of data is already public, and we, I mean, we're, we are going to be launching an opt-in. We're not doing analytics yet, mm -hmm. okay. so we're not, when we do, we will definitely have an, have an opt-in. Uh -huh. But we don't even ask for any personal information. Like, we don't even really want you to give it to us. Mm -hmm. I mean, an email so we can contact you. But beyond that, we're not, um, you know, tracking people at all. Gotcha. So, but yeah, when we do, we certainly will. And I think that, you know, we'll be, you'd be surprised that, especially if you're getting rewards mm -hmm. for sharing your data with the community, mm -hmm. I think people would. Uh -huh. Well, it's fascinating that yours is uh, completely open source, uh, including the user interface and, and everything. So uh, that means that somebody could uh, take a copy of that and set up their own social network based on your platform. Yep. Is that correct? Um, are you aware of anybody that does that currently? Or Yeah, there are some. Um, there's a company called Solix, which uses it for like marketing purposes. They have like a whole blog, community.solix.com. They're like an enterprise data company. Mm -hmm. um, but we haven't, 
we just got our Docker installation working really well, like within the past three months. Uh -huh. So I think momentum is about to start picking up. And we're working on ActivityPub so that the nodes can intercommunicate if they want to. Uh -huh. um, but, you know, before you really had to be able to get your hands dirty. So now that Docker's working better and we're using Kubernetes, the, the install flow will be much more smooth. Got it. Yeah. Cool. So what are some of the, the challenges that you face, uh, for example, pertaining to user adoption? Because in the social network space, that seems a hurdle um, to, to get users on board. And, and you have a, a good million users uh, already. So, so how does that? It's hard. We're seeing organic growth from a lot of the scandals that are happening on mm -hmm. major social networks, whether it's Cambridge Analytica or algorithm manipulation or surveillance. You know, people are looking for alternatives, but, you know, more transparent, secure, open, open source networks, it's harder for us to get adoption as well because we're not using the same dirty tricks mm -hmm. that Facebook and Twitter use, like to basically tricking you into importing your whole contact uh, base. And the issue with importing your, allowing an app to take all your contacts is that you're not only giving up your own privacy, you're giving up the privacy of your friends. Mm -hmm. You know, people don't really think about that. You know, your friend didn't say you can give Facebook your number. Mm -hmm. it, it's convenient, but it's really not the best way to be doing things. So, you know, the uphill battle is, is even more difficult. But I think people are getting so disillusioned now. The reach is going down. You know, on Facebook, you're only reaching 5% of your own followers, mm -hmm. which is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Like, what's, what's the point of a social network but to reach your followers? Yeah. So people are getting pissed and are looking organically for alternatives. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, great. Yeah, we don't want these uh, social networks to be, become an echo chamber, right? We want to uh, have it as an extension to our, uh, our connections in the world. So um, does your current user base um, fit a certain profile or, or, or do you have sort of a, a wide uh, type of user base? Because um, we hope to get our moms and our, our grandparents to, to join the same social networks, right? Or, or is yeah. yours trying to be specialized in any way? Or I think you have to focus in the beginning on a niche. So obviously the crypto world, um, lots of activists, artists, um, writers, filmmakers trying to get exposure on their content because of our boost system. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, you'll see a lot of people, yeah, just trying to connect with new friends. Not so much the moms and grandmas yet, mm -hmm. but you know, even Facebook didn't start off like that. Yeah. And there's some other really cool social networks in even the Ethereum space, like you've got PP, you've got um, Acacia, which is still new, but PP has, has a working product. But the only issue is that with the gas prices, it's hard because you, know, on, you have to pay for every transaction mm -hmm. on those networks. For us, we've we want to educate people about the blockchain, and so we offer the option to boost on-chain or off-chain, or to send tokens to each other on-chain or off-chain, mm -hmm. because the reality is that 90% of people just aren't going to set up MetaMask. Yeah. yeah. So you, we, we, but we're trying to incentivize on-chain interaction, uh -huh. but you sort of need to spoon feed people. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, well, uh, what can we expect in the, in the coming years, or, or what's your next uh, big uh, um, features that you're going to add? Or um... We just launched video chat okay. through uh, leveraging Jitsi, uh -huh. which is an open source encrypted video chat tool, very similar to Google Hangouts. So that was really exciting. We want to integrate token payments to access people's groups. We're going to be monetizing much more. Mm -hmm. That's what we're with different different tokens, different types of currencies, so that's all flowing around. Mm -hmm. um, we want to integrate Nomad, which is the fully decentralized network more so, so that we can guide people over there and have them sort of coiled together. Mm -hmm. Those are the main things. Okay, great. So how do you see the ecosystem evolving in the social network space? Are there going to be more and more social networks, or is one of them going to be the winner? Like. Uh, <laughs> Um, or, or can they benefit, can they um, help each other? I would hope that yeah. it's sort of a, a mutual leveraging and federation. I think it will be definitely a network of networks. Mm -hmm. But I th also certain protocols, I think, will become more popular. Mm -hmm. So like DAT is growing, IPFS is growing, mm -hmm. 
um, you know, Mines is growing. A lot of these other crypto social networks are, are, are growing. So mm-hmm. honestly, we're all in it together. I, I think that as long as a company is committed to free and open source software for transparency, uh, privacy, these types of principles, mm-hmm. then they're all going to keep rising up. Mm-hmm. And there, it's not like one ring to rule them all. I mean, mm-hmm. realistically, we don't want one mm-hmm. to be controlling it. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so, so if somebody um, uses your platform to essentially fork or create their own um, social network based on your software, could they become a pod in the ecosystem in, in a sense? Yes. Where, where, uh-huh. is, is that your goal? Or uh, Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. And like Mastodon is doing cool stuff with that and Diaspora. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're, um, they're doing the federated model. Mm-hmm. The only issue with the federated model is that you sort of end up with all of these tiny pods with not that many people on them. Mm-hmm. So it is good for niche communities, but it also makes global adoption really difficult because I think like when people, Diaspora came out and people were really excited about it, but you go to a pod and you're like, where yeah. is everybody? Exactly. It's, yeah. too, it's almost too scattered for critical mass to get initiated. Mm-hmm. So we've sort of taken, we, we've been trying to build a big community, mm-hmm. and now we're starting to mm-hmm. scatter. Great. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I think uh, what the users might like to hear is, uh, what can you tell our listeners um, to be reinsured that uh, their self-sovereign identity is protected and, and that the information that they share um, is, is, is truly safe um, because... Every company might tell the user that, but, but sure. how can they be assured? Well, the biggest thing is look at our code. <laughs> okay. That's essential. Uh-huh. Um, also, we don't make promises that we can't keep either. So, like, most of what you share on Minds is public. Uh-huh. We don't really offer the option, like, a quasi-private profile just because, look, that's not encrypted. Mm-hmm. So, like, when Facebook says, oh, you know, your private profile, well, it's not private. It's certainly not private to Facebook. Mm-hmm. It's sort of hidden, but when we, so, you know, a lot of people are publicly sharing voluntarily. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, with Messenger on Minds, we don't even have access to the contents of the messages. It is encrypted. Um, And we want, we're we're gonna make that end to end. It's, we don't, it's, they're password protected, so we can't access, but it's not good enough yet. Mm -hmm. And so, and we also just don't require information. So I would just say, don't even give us anything that you don't want to want to, because, Mm You know, the reality is that, yeah, we do use AWS right now. Who knows what they're doing? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, everyone here who's, who's on AWS, we don't know. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing that I would love to see out of this whole movement is some, well, and ultimately servers are not where we want to be. Mm-hmm. But it would be cool if there was some sort of more trusted cloud. I don't know. Oh, okay. I, 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 but it's, that's sort of an oxymoron. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. I don't know how to respond to that, yeah. but it's a it's a good one to ponder on. So, can we give uh, the users a quick little demo um, of, yeah, of your app? It. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Over here. All right. Cool. So this is my page. Um, let's see. So basically, I've been sharing this stuff, and I'll find a post that. So like, Hacker Noon posted this about the JP Morgan stable coins. So this post has received 894 impressions. People have wired it five tokens. And if I want to boost it with my tokens, just click boost, one token, and a thousand views. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do off-chain just for purposes of this, but you could go on-chain as well. Then, you know, you've got your news feed, you've got Messenger, you've got Discovery, you can filter by channels and, you know, videos, blogs. And then you've got your wallet. So this is telling me my next payout's gonna be in 13 hours. I'm estimated to get two tokens. This is my percentage of the daily reward token pool. So for every action, and we're constantly gonna be updating and evolving these. I think we need to be giving out more rewards, to be honest. But you get a score, and then your total score is divided by the total network score. So you see my score, 167 divided by 47,000. That is my percentage share of the reward pool. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and then you can, you know, configure your, your addresses and let's see, we've also got blogs, groups. That's the basics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, yeah. Bill. Thanks for giving us the demo and it's good talking to you. Thanks. Thanks.